this video and hundreds more like it available on free Photoshop video tutorials.com. In this video we're going to learn how to simulate the effect of using a tablet so that we can use brush pressure which is to create thinner or thicker lines depending on how fast or slow you're moving. We're going to use this technique, this simulated technique, on text. So again this is something that even people with a tablet couldn't actually do uh, because we're just going to take that effect and apply it onto text that you use with the type tool. So let's have a look here um, and uh, what we're going to do is just go into our type tool with a fairly size, big size here type, uh, with white, I'm just going to type in spooky. Okay, I'm just going to make this even bigger. I'm going to go control and T and uh, holding down the shift. I'm just going to make this quite large here. Moving off to the center here. So we have our text. Now, if you've been following any of your our other tutorials on simulating the uh, this effect, um, we've always reverted to going into paths so that we could, uh, you know, create that effect. Now, w w that is correct. We need to be with paths, but how do we actually get type to be on a path? Because at the moment, it's just a layer with type. Well, uh, short of actually... Uh, you know, going in with her pen tool and recreating the path. Uh, luckily, there is an, uh, something that you can do to uh, have Photoshop automatically convert that for you. So we're going to convert our type to a path, and we're going to do this by going into Layer, Type, and Convert to Shape. Layer, Type, and Convert to Shape. So we're going to click OK. And uh, what happens here is uh, it transforms the, the text, right? First of all, it's not editable anymore. So we can't, you know, go in and, and type, retype it in. That's the first casualty. But the other thing is that what's actually happening is we have uh, a white layer. You know, it's just filled in with white with a mask. And the mask uh, masks out everything else and makes it, you know, the text appear there. So we're just masking things out. And with this mask comes in a temporary path here. So we have a path which is good, now we can work with our stuff, but there's one other thing, it's in italics here, and all our temporary paths are in italics. And what this means is that once we're no longer with the layer that has this uh, layer mask here, that path is no longer visible. So let me just show you, because we would create a new layer here anyways to create our stroke, and in that new layer, if we're going to pass, there isn't anything. So we need to convert our temporary path into a permanent one, and we do this by just double-clicking. We double-click on it, we can name it, we can leave it as path1, I'll put it in as text, for example. And now we have both our paths here, the temporary one and the permanent one, if you will. Now if we go into our uh, blank layer and turn off or even throw away the new one, the, the old tax layer. We don't need it anymore. If we go into our paths, we only have a permanent one. So that's good. So all we needed there is to just, we've converted our tax to a path, and there it is. So it's there, and it'll be there no matter which layer we're on. Good. Okay. The other thing is we need to make sure that we are on the right settings for the brush. So if you've been paying attention to the, uh, if you've been watching the other tutorials, it's fairly straightforward. We're going to Window and Brushes. Make sure we are on our Brush tool. And make sure that we select an appropriate brush here. I like using this one here. Uh, it's it's fairly uh, uh, artistic here. So I'm going to use uh, something like a 14, uh, 24 point size here to create the stroke. Go into Shape Dynamics and make sure it's turned on with pen pressure. So make sure that you're seeing this and not this, right? So that's what we want to be tapering off. Okay. Once we're done, then it's fairly straightforward. We bring up our paths. Go into Window and Paths, right? And then we right-click on the text, go into Stroke Path, and click OK. We can unview it, and uh, there we are. So we have our text. So uh, again, we can go into, this uh, becomes a little bit more interesting as you start adding some effects, right? So we're going to go into Outer uh, Glow, for example. Uh, create a nice, uh, bigger Outer Glow here. And we can change the color of this Outer Glow to something a bit more sinister perhaps. There we are. That's looking a little bit better now. Now we can add in uh, an inner glow as well, and the inner glow works best if you change the mode to multiply. Then you can see the things that are applied inside. And then it's usually good to apply something that complements that other color. So something that complements the purple. So for example, uh, a red would do. You can create a stronger red and then uh, change the size here so make it bigger or smaller. Just something that just adds a little bit more punch. And you can always turn it off to see what's going on and see how much of the effect you're actually applying. 
So I think the size zero here, we want to make it kind of subtle here with the inner glow, but it kind of helps define the edges here, I find. Okay, and we'll click OK. And there we are. So we have a really nice cool text effect. And we didn't have to do much drawing at all. We're just using that effect uh, of the simulated brush pressure to create this, uh, you know, really cool text effect. If you enjoyed this video, show your support by subscribing, rating, and adding it to favorites. Leave comments on our website and we'll create even more videos that interest you.